Iran's general election deals a blow to the religious establishment. Conservatives did win the vote, but the turnout was the lowest in four decades. So, how will Tehran deal with what seems to be growing public discontent? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Adrian Finnegan. Hardliners are set for sweeping gains in Iran's parliamentary elections, but they appear to have less popular support. Voter turnout in Friday's polls was the lowest since the Islamic Revolution in 1979. That's despite the Supreme Leader urging people to cast their ballots as a religious duty to show resistance in the face of US sanctions. Now, conservatives are expected to have the upper hand in parliament, and reformists who'd pushed for greater engagement with the West have been weakened. Some say many Iranians are unhappy with their government and felt discouraged from voting. With more than 7,000 potential candidates disqualified, voters' options were limited anyway. But Iran's interior minister says that other circumstances, including the coronavirus, were to blame for the lower turnout. We held these elections when there were several incidents in the country. We had bad weather, there was this coronavirus disease, there was the plane crash, also the events of January and November. In such a situation, the turnout rate seems perfectly acceptable for us. More now from Al Jazeera's Dorsa Jabari in Tehran. The Conservative candidates have had a sweeping victory in the parliamentary elections. They have got 219 seats out of 290 in the upcoming uh, parliament when they take session in May. Uh, the Conservatives have seen a, a very strong support, mainly because the voter turnout has been very low. It's one of the, the lowest in Iran's history since the revolution of 1979. In Tehran alone, there were uh, about 26% voter turnout, and nationwide that figure was up around 42%. That is the lowest that has ever taken place in a parliamentary election in Iran. Uh, many people we spoke to uh, said that they were not going to vote because they were not satisfied that they reformist candidates were disqualified for justified reasons. Also, that the MPs, once they get into power, that they don't do what they were supposed to do, what they promised. This is a disillusionment that many people we spoke to felt that was present, and that is why there was such a low turnout in this election. What this all means for the future of this country, it means that they, there is a trend that we're seeing that this conservative uh, movement is gaining power and that the remainder uh, term of Hassan Rouhani will be one with very little power when it comes to dealing with parliament and passing legislation. For the time being, uh, we will see this uh, parliament come into uh, session in a few months. Uh, until then, the president has his work cut out for him. He's going to have a lot of opposition in this new parliament. And and uh, that means that any kind of negotiation with the uh, West, including the United States, will be very unlikely when it comes to trying to secure a new nuclear deal and trying to get Iran back into the international community and its economic uh, markets open again. Dorsha Jabari, Al Jazeera for Inside Story. All right, let's bring in our guests for today's discussion. From Tehran, we're joined by Mustafa Kosheshem, who's editor-in-chief of the Fars News Agency. From London, Aaron Merat, uh, who is an Iran analyst and former Tehran correspondent for The Economist. And here in Doha, we have Machu Zweri, director of uh, the Gulf Studies Center at Qatar University. Gentlemen, welcome to you all. Mustafa Kosheshem, let's uh, start with you. Um, what's your interpretation of this uh, election and the low turnout in particular? It was an engineered victory for the Conservatives, wasn't it? Hello and thanks for having me. No, I do not agree with you. It was not engineered. As a matter of fact, uh, leaders of the reformist camp have been saying, people like uh, leaders of the Nidai Iranian Reformist Party, uh, people like Mr. Khuchani, who is a leader of uh, the moderate camp uh, party, Kargozaran uh, Sazandegi, they've been stressing that the uh, factor behind their uh, loss has been their poor record and performance in power all throughout the last several years. Yeah, yeah. Hang, also, hang on they a second. have been acknowledging Mustafa, the hang, same hang, people. Hang on, hang on a second. These are leaders of reformist parties. M Mustafa, hang on a second. I just want to make the point before you, you expand upon that. How could this have been anything but engineered when so many reformists were barred from standing in the first place? 
and I'm, I'm exactly explaining the same point. You know, uh, I'm, I'm telling you the words and the quotes of these reformist leaders of uh, uh, reformist parties. They say that, uh, like the leaders of Nidai Iranian reformist party, they have been saying uh, all through the media that there has been a sufficient uh, uh, range of tastes for anyone uh, who wants to cast a vote. That is to say, uh, they were present uh, on the scene. I mean, the reformists were present. That's what they themselves say. And uh, uh, it seems that before the election, they were emphasizing on disqualifications in order to hide their defeat. But some of the camp, uh, uh, you know, they came out to tell the truth that uh, there, there were reformists present on the scene. Also, a poll conducted by ISPA uh, polling center said that from all those people who, who didn't appear uh, at the polls, only 3% of them believed that they shouldn't take part in the election because uh, they didn't have a candidate. So uh, for 97% of those who, who didn't appear at the polls, there were other reasons right. at work. I, I, One has been uh, the poor record of the reformists whenever they are in power for all throughout the last several decades. In the first election after they come to power in the parliament and administration, we see a low turnout, of course, not as low as now. Uh, uh, in the past six years, they promised to improve the economy only through one single scenario, removing the sanctions and through the JCPOA, and they okay. failed, despite the very fact that right. Iran complied with all its undertakings according to their own strategy. And that was their only, that was their only scenario, they said, and they didn't have a plan B. But this, this doesn't mean that it's been all. No, of course, the gas price, uh, price hike had a very determining factor in dissuading the people from appearing at the polls. Also, the rumors about the spread, not the rumors, but the news about the spread of corona just a couple of days before the election. Yeah, okay. It also played a factor. There were other reasons as well. Yeah. Mustafa, the, the, I mean, there are many issues there that, that, that I, I would like to, uh, to, to, to uh, take issue with you on, and, and I know our other two guests uh, want to do the same. I can see Mahjou here shaking his head uh, here in Doha. Let's let's bring in Aaron uh, in uh, London. Aaron, what, what does uh, the low turnout in, in this election tell us? What message were non-voters delivering and, and to whom? And what do you make of what Mustafa was saying? Um, so I think you can basically have it both ways. Um, the, the low turnout certainly uh, was perhaps influenced by external factors um, your guest has just mentioned the coronavirus. Um, Iranians are by and large kind of hypochondriacs as well, so that would chime with a lot of um, my um, experience, like people aren't going to go out if they feel that there's a health risk. Um, on the other hand, um, the Iran is a managed democracy. No one's ever, no one claims it's a true democracy. Uh, the Guardian Council manages the candidates. And uh, if you're looking at uh, the system from an Iranian voter's perspective, you will see that uh, any um, uh, any your your affluence has been shedded if you're middle class, and if you're lower middle class, you will probably be in poverty now due to years of sanctions on the economy. Iran heavily relies on um, uh, importing goods, and if it can't trade with the outside world, um, it creates enormous inflation inside the country. Now, this. Some Iranians will argue that this is a problem of a system as a whole, and they are consciously not voting to send a message. Um, you can also argue that the system itself cannot provide for Iranians because it is curtailed by um, U.S. sanctions, which are illegal. They violate the U.N.-ratified uh, JCPOA, um, and the U.S. pulled out of the JCPOA. Iran, as your previous guest mentioned, was complying with it. Um, but I don't think uh, uh, democracy is not doing well anywhere in the world, and um, it's certainly not doing well in Iran. Makhjoub Zweri, um, do you want to come back on what you've heard uh, so far before I ask Absolutely. you a direct question? Go on. Absolutely. I mean, first of all, we know that um, reformists were, were banned of, of power since 2000, maybe since the sixth majlis, um, and, and we know that the last attempt to, for them to go back to politics was 2009, where most of their leaders, Mahdi Karoubi um, uh, and, and the former uh, prime minister, 
uh, uh, they are now in house arrest. Uh, the, the former president, Mohammed Khatami, nearly, nearly uh, is banned of politics. So those are the potent figures uh, when it comes to the reformists. I do believe personally, 100 percent, that reform, reform and reform camp actually do not exist in Iran. What, what, is, what is being now called uh, reformists is actually what has been left of uh, old um, uh, or group of reformists who still believe that uh, the political system can be reformed, we, they can do something. In reality, Iran has one political color since uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the sixth parliament, where was the last re reformists were representative 100 percent, and they were actually in power. What, whether the president was Mohammed Khatami, and the parliament was actually controlled or, or, or had a majority of reformists. And they, they, they learned the lesson that basically there, there are red lines. If they get close to that, they will be under severe pressure. And in, in that time, they tried to do so when they asked for, uh, uh, you know, for, 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 for uh, uh, reviewing two articles in the Constitution, and they were banned of doing so. The second point I want to raise, this election is being, this uh, round of election is being designed from the beginning. It was obvious that people there, they have uh, mistrust of the government, they have mistrust of the political process, they believe that there was not, nothing has been done. Um, uh, 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 the president, Hassan Rouhani, is not a reformist, he is a moderate, he is, he is, he is the candidate of the establishment. He was, he was the person who everyone liked him to be the president because he was leader, he was the le leading the, the negotiation with the EU um, in, in th since 2003. So he was representing the establishment rather than the, rather than the reformist ca uh, campaign. Okay. So any, any kind of accusation he does nothing is actually uh, uh, denying the fact that actually they put a lot of obstacles behind, uh, before him and he, he wasn't okay. able to do anything. Uh, Mustafa, you, you talked about the disillusionment uh, that people have for, for those, the reformist politicians in, in, in the country. Uh, and perhaps you were saying that, that they're to blame for their, their fall in popularity by, by, by not implementing the legislation that they've promised. I mean, that's not quite the case, though, is it? In, in many cases, they've been prevented from implementing uh, legislation by uh, the supreme leader. No, Adrian. Uh, as a matter of fact, they've been in power. Uh, let me explain a little bit, because this, this is just a propaganda in order to whitewash inefficiency of the reformist camp. Uh, if they are banned, and they've been banned, as my colleague has been saying, then why do they insist to remain in power so much? They want to stay in power to be an actor, an influential actor, within the framework of the Islamic Republic, and they do not let power go. No way. Never. That's why exactly they struck uh, an alliance with President Rouhani. How could he become a president if it hadn't been for uh, Mr. Khatami, the former Iranian president, the leader of the reformist camp? He stressed in his uh, both the first time that uh, Rouhani was elected and also in his second term election, he stressed, I repeat, you know, this has become a catchphrase among Iranians, I repeat, you need to go cast vote for Rouhani. And when Rouhani went to his hometown of Yazd, the first thing that he said was, I do my greetings, I appreciate Mr. Khatami's father and he himself. They are in alliance, they are very much livid, and they are alive on, in Iranian politics. And you know the strategy for this time around, why they took part in the election? And they gave two lists of candidates, not one, two lists in uh, you know, Tehran and hundreds of others all across the country because they want to stay in power. Their strategy was, we will take part in the election okay. because they want to remain an influential factor. These are just propaganda that, that, that some reformists did and they still do in order to cover their inefficiency. Otherwise, take a look at the number of MPs that have been disqualified for the next round and were not present in this election. Um, from 90 MPs that were disqualified, some, of course, later uh, their cases were revised, some 10, 15 of them. But 45 reformists and 35 principalists, the opposite camp, they were disqualified. Disqualifications are not just for the sake of political beliefs or th things like that. 
uh, if they've done corruption, if they have uh, they've used misused power, if they have uh, done anything wrong, they have a criminal record, they are disqualified. And uh, uh, some 50 uh, percent just, of the principalists, yeah. as well as 50 okay. percent of the reformist camp, uh, were disqualified among from Mustafa, the MPs. Let, let's, Aaron, you want to come in there? I was just saying, painting uh, Khatami as a leader of a reformist camp and the reformists being um, a hugely influential part of politics in Iran is patently absurd. Um, the reformist leaders have been in prison since 2009. Khatami, is, his freedom to appear in front of the press or his appear to go to political events um, is, is also entirely curtailed. The idea that the reformists have um, uh, an enormous constituency where it matters in Iran, which is uh, in the executive, but also in the non-elected parts of the government, uh, hasn't been true since the late 90s. Um, and I don't know how you can really paint it up another way. Um, successively, since the founding of the Islamic Republic, after Khomeini died, the elitist clerical establishment side of the regime, which was deeply uh, ambivalent as well, because they also had the revolutionary populist side. Um, the elitist clerical side essentially took over with, uh, with, the, uh, with the supreme leadership of Khamenei. And ever since then, it has been entrenching its, it, itself. And yeah. it has been doing so for, for, re for reasons of political expediency, because it has been under extreme pressure. Um, Iran is under extreme pressure from the outside. And when um, and when regimes are under extreme pressure from the outside, they tend to close ranks. And the more principalist elements of a regime are, of course, going to uh, take a foreground. Um, but it's been, I, I think this sounds 20 years out of date, what I'm hearing now. Uh, Aaron, uh, the Conservatives then control all the main levers in power uh, in Iran now following this election, except for the presidency. Um, so, so what does this result mean for President Rouhani, uh, a, a relative moderate, uh, in his last year in, in office? And, and what sort of person is likely to replace him next year? Well, Rouhani, Rouhani's um, pitch when he became um, the president in 2013 was to negotiate the JCPOA with the US. And um, his critics uh, from the principalist camp have been in entirely vindicated because uh, there was a change at the top of the US and um, the US unilaterally pulled out. So uh, Rouhani, uh, Rouhani's uh, legitimacy among the hardliners, but also um, a lot of normal, quote-unquote, everyday Iranians has been severely dented. Um, uh, Rouhani himself, is a, he's a security guy. He's, a uh, he's, uh, he's not a reformist per se, but he, has, uh, he was buoyed on the back of... Uh, he, reformists formed part of his constituency. But the reformists themselves are nowhere near power. And certainly not after the, um, the uh, Guardian Council's intervention in this parliamentary election. Um, having a, a stacked um, uh, legislature also pays the way for the presidential election um, because you need, uh, if you're going to have a, uh, if, in the, if in the unlikely event we have, um, uh, we don't have a uh, principalist or hardline president. Um, which could happen due to um, American politics, you're going to need a stacked okay. majlis in order to veto any of their ministers. Uh, Majub, I, I just want to pick up on something you, you were saying a few moments ago. To what extent is, is this a lic a, a election a, a signal that the, uh, the, the dual ruling system in which reformists and moderates have, have provided political opposition uh, to the Conservatives come to an end? That's it with this election. And, you know, it is obvious that the whole political scene in Iran is, is dominated or con and controlled by what's happening uh, outside the border. And I mean here the foreign policy issue and the pressure from the United States. All of the internal players, basically, this, this, this parliament, uh, parliament is actually an indicator, a reflection of the concerns of what's happening in, um, outside and the pressure on Iran. So both and both, I mean, in, in such circumstances, we know that in the last 20 years, reformists, um, they have no place 
in such uh, circumstances and have they have to be marginalized so it is it was obvious that the the the, the uh, uh, conservative will win what's interesting Indian, about the winning of or the victory of of, conser of conservatives is actually they are competing within themselves now they are com they are the competitor within the the same camp and and that may lead actually to fragility to see the fragility with, within their performance because they are not really 100% on the same page because they have different agenda within the parliament and this may weaken their their performance there is one important point we have to remember this elections and every elections is is about renewing legitimacy to the regime and this is the lowest turning turning out in the elections the, the, the previous one was the seventh majlis, and the, 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 the percentage of turning out was 51.2. This is nearly 42. This is absolutely a, a real concern to the regime. This does, having, having said that, we have to keep in mind the, the, the voters are divided on, into three blocks quickly. Nearly 30 percent a guaranteed voter. Those basically with the regime, whatever the regime does, they will vote for, 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 for the candidates of the regime. There is another block who are really, uh, in, they have doubts, and those people, they will look at the, you know, the political circumstances. And those, the other block, basically, they, they don't want to participate 100 percent. So basically, they're already 30 percent are secured in the election and the regime was able okay. only to secure 12 percent from other voters that is a strong message about politics and foreign policy and the performance of the regime and the establishment as a whole actually in the recent years mustafa do you want, do you want to come back on that um, it, it, the, the elections are all about lending legitimacy to the regime does the leadership in iran still have legitimacy and and what about this fragmentation between conservatism and modernism in the country um, where's the hostility between the two going to lead oh first of all i have a lot of comments on my colleagues so uh, what they said um make it make it fact, make it brief Mustafa, please if you can 42.57 percent sure sure I'll, I'll do my best um the 42.57% is still at uh, the world average. It's one of the best uh, uh, in the world. Even in the West, that claims to be the uh, cradle of democracy. Uh, look uh, at the numbers in France in the last parliamentary election. Around 48% of the people took part in the election. So uh, this is taking part in you know, uh, uh, the country's affairs and management and sovereignty. Uh, that's what, uh, you know, people do normally. They resolve their differences and they express their views through the ballot box. Since 15 months ago, because we were short of time, let me put it this way. Uh, we knew that two shifts would happen from this election uh, through the uh, opinion polls conducted by American and Iranian universities and, and academic centers. One was the shift of power from the reformists to the principalist camp, because the reformists always uh, uh, pursue the liberal economy, they widen the Gini index and they deteriorate the condition for the lower classes of the society. That's why the southern neighborhoods in Tehran and many other cities, they rush to the uh, polling stations to cast their vote to shift okay. the power to the principalist camp, but not the old generation. Let's remember, okay. that's the you, second shift about that 30 has seconds. just started. 60% of these newcomers are fresh, are fresh uh, politicians. They have never been a career diplomat or career politician. They have been picked up as experts in economy, in politics, foreign policy, media, culture, and so on and so forth, in order to um, improve this situation and put an, stalemate, uh, put an end uh, to the stalemate that was caused by this administration uh, through their new ideas and plans and expert plans. Okay. There, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it. Many thanks indeed, all of you, for being with us. Uh, Mustafa Kosheshim in Thank Tehran, you. Aaron Merritt in London, and Mahjoub Swery here in Doha. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget, you can see this program again at any time just by going to the website. You'll find that at aljazeera.com. For further discussion on this topic, join us at our Facebook page. You'll find that at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle, at AJ Inside Story, from me, Adrian Finnegan and the whole team here in Doha, thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Bye for now.